Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In the last few videos, I have discussed about the pacing and then drawbacks of pacing. Then I have discussed about the segmentation, drawbacks of segmentation. I hope you have watched those videos. If you did not watch those videos or if you don't know those concepts, I request you to go back and watch those videos and come back to this video. In this video, I want to discuss about the segmented pacing concept in detail and then I will discuss the drawbacks in the segmented pacing concept. I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. In segmented pacing, the main memory is logically divided into frames and process is divided into segments. Is it clear? When it comes to the pacing, the main memory is divided into frames and process is divided into pages. When it comes to the segmentation, the main memory and the process is logically divided into segments. But when it comes to the segmented pacing, the process is divided into segments and main memory is divided into frames. Now you have a process P1 which consists of three segments such as S0, S1, S2. Is it clear? Now remember one thing. Each segment will be divided into pages. Then the size of a page will be equal to frame size. Are you able to understand? So we are logically dividing a process into segments and each segment is divided into pages. Let's consider that segment S0 is divided into five pages such as page number zero, page number one, page number two, page number three, page number four. Similarly, segment S1 is logically divided into four pages. Segment S2 is logically divided into three pages. Is it clear? Now let's consider that page number zero of segment S0 is stored in the frame number zero. In frame number zero, page number zero of segment S0 is there. Similarly, in frame number two, page number one of segment S0 is there. In frame number one, Page number 0 of segment S1 is there. Page number 1 of segment S1 is there. Similarly here, page number 0 of segment S2 is there. Page number 2 of segment S2 is there. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Now, what we will have to do? Now, where the particular page of a segment we stored, we need to have a table. When it comes to the pacing, we have a page table called page table for each process. When it comes to the segmentation, we have a segment table for each process. But here in segmented pacing, the process is logically divided into segments and each segment is divided into pages. So if we maintain one page table, then what the entries will be? The index will be page number. Suppose let's take that if we keep one page table, then it will have the page number zero. Now, if page number 0, if it is available in some particular frame, now whether this page number 0 is belongs to segment S0 or S1 or S2, there is a confusion because page number 0 is available in segment S0, page number 0 is available in segment S1 and also in S2. So, we cannot keep only single page table. So, instead of that one, what we will go for is that we will keep a page table for each segment. Suppose let's take that a process is having three segments then you will have three page tables. Is it clear? So you will have a page table for segment S0, page table for segment S1, page table for segment S2. Now you will have a doubt how many entries will be there in the page table of S0. How many pages are there? 5 pages are there in the segment S0. So it will have 5 entries. Is it clear? It will consist of entries such as page number 0, page number 1, page number 2, page number 3, page number 4. So it will have the indices as the page number. Similarly, page table of S1 will have four entries such as page number 0, page number 1, page number 2, page number 3. Page table of S2 will consist of three entries such as page number 0, page number 1, page number 2. Now look at here. Page number 0 of segment S0 is stored in where frame number 0. 
Is it clear? Similarly, page number 1 of segment S0 is stored in the frame number 2. So, you will have the few optional bits such as present or absent bit, you will have a dirty bit, you will have the reference bit, cache enabled disabled bit will be there, protection bit will be there. What is the significance of this present or absent bit is that if a particular page is available in the main memory then it will be 1. So, page number 0 is available in the main memory, so that's why it is 1 and it is available in the frame number 0. Similarly, page number 1 of segment S0 is available in the main memory, so it is 1 and it is available in the frame number 2. Page number 2 of segment S0 is available in the main memory, not available, so this will be 0, it will be 0, it will be 0. So, page number 2, page number 3, page number 4 is not available in the main memory. If it is not available in the main memory, how can we give the frame number? Is it clear? So similarly, if you look at the page table of S1, page number 0 of segment S1 is stored in the frame number 1. So present or absent bit will be 1. Page number 1 of segment S1 is available in the frame number 3. So present or absent bit will be 1. Page number 2, page number 3 of segment S1 is not available in the main memory. So, present or absent bit will be 0. Now, similarly, page number 0 of segment S2 is available in the frame number 5. So, present or absent bit will be 1. Page number 1 of segment S2 is not available in the main memory. So, it will be 0. Page number 2 of segment S2 is available in the frame number 6. Okay. So, the present or absent bit will be 1. And remember one important point. If you have multiple page tables for the each process, then all the page tables, suppose look at here, page table of S0 will be stored in one of the frame, page table of S1 will be stored in another frame of the main memory, page table, two, page table of S2 will be stored in one of the frame. Let us consider that in frame number 7, page table of S0 is there. In frame number 8, page table of S1 is there. In frame number 10, page table of S2 is stored. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Now you will ask me one doubt. Sir, when it comes to the pacing, whenever CPU requests for a particular byte information of a particular process, it will look at the register. That register will consist of page table base address of the particular process. When it comes to the segmentation, it will have a register consists of segment table base register. But here you have Let's take that in this scenario, three page tables are there and three page tables are located in three frames of the main memory. Then you should maintain one register for the base address of this table, base address of this table, base address. So you need to maintain three registers. So it will be difficult. If you have 10 page tables for a particular process, then you need 10 registers. Is it clear? So, instead of that one, it will maintain one table called segment table. Is it clear? Now, the segment table will consist of segment number and the base address of the page table. Is it clear? Now, you can ask me how many entries will be there in the segment table? How many segments are there? Three segments are there for a process P1. So, it will have three entries such as segment 0, segment 1, segment 2. Now, each segment will consist of the base address of the page table. So, it will consist of page table 0's base address. So, here where it is stored? It is page table of S0 is stored in the frame number S7. Let us take that frame number S7 starting address is 3000. So, that information will be available and it is available page number page table of S1 is available in frame number S1. Let us take that this starting address is 4000 and this one is let us take that frame number 10 and this starting address is some 6000. So, the segment table will consist of the base address of each page table of this particular segment. Are you able to understand? Now, this segment table also will be loaded in one of the frame of the main memory. So, let me keep it here as segment table of process P1. So, we will have one register 
consists of the base address of the segment table. So it will consist of segment table base register. Suppose let's take that this address is 5000. So it will give you that information for you. Base address is nothing but what starting address. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? So if you have multiple segments, you will have multiple page tables and you will have one segment table and all these multiple page tables need to be stored in multiple frames and also segment table also need to be stored in one of the frame of the main memory. Now we know that CPU will always generate the logical address. Okay. Now the logical address need to be converted into physical address with the help of memory management unit. Now when it comes to the main memory, it is divided into frames and only. Am I right? So physical address will consist of two things. One is the frame number and then frame offset. Then you can ask me number of bits required for the frame offset will be depend on what? It will be depend on the frame size. We already discussed that page size is equal to frame size. Okay. Then number of bits required for the frame number will be depend on number of frames in the main memory. Is it clear? Now you will ask me one doubt. Sir, what is the logical address will consist of? When it comes to paging, the logical address is segregated into page number and page offset. When it comes to the segmentation, it is logically segregated into segment number and segment offset. But when it comes to the segmented paging, what information it will have? It will have segment number, page number and then page offset. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Now, number of bits required for the page offset will depend on the page size. Number of bits required for the page number will be depend on the number of pages in a segment and segment number will depend on number of segments of a particular process. Now let's take that CPU has generated the logical address and it is asking for the segment 1 in segment 1 page number 2 and it is asking the 10th byte. And you know that page offset will be equal to frame offset so this is nothing but the 10th byte. Now we need to convert the segment number and page number to the frame number. Is it clear? Now how it will happen? Whenever the CPU generates the logical address of a particular process, first it will look at the base address of the segment table. Segment table base address is 5000. So it will go to the 5000 location and get this information. Now segment number is 1. So it will go to this particular information. Are you able to understand? Then page number 2. So how it will get? So page table is available in the 4000 location. So it will go and then it will go to the segment S1 will go to the page number 2. So here it will go. Are you able to understand segment S1 will consist of the page table of S1. Are you able to understand? So in that S1 you need the page number 2. So this is the information. Now you want the 10th byte but whether the page number 2 of segment S1 is available in the main memory? It is not available in the main memory. How you are saying? Because the presenter option bit has kept as 0 meaning is that particular page is not available in the main memory. Then what will happen? Page fault will occur then operating system will take control and it will load the particular page from the secondary memory to the main memory. So the total time required for that one we will call it as page fault service time. Now let's take that it is requesting for the page number 1. So in segment 1 page number 1 and the 10th byte. So it will go to this segment 1. It will go to the page number 1. It is available in the frame number 3 because presenter option bit is 1. So meaning is that page number 1 is available in the main memory and it is available in the frame number 3. So the physical address will be converted to frame number 3 and the 10th byte. So it will go to the frame number 3 and then it will fetch the instruction which is available in the 10th byte. I hope you have understood about the segmented paging. Let me give an overview for you. In segmented paging, the main memory is logically divided into frames 
and process is logically divided into segments and each segment will be divided into pages and for each segment you will have a page table and the page tables will be stored in one of the frames of main memory and then you will have a segment table which will be consists of the base address of each page okay then CPU will generate the logical address will consist of segment number, page number and page offset. Memory management unit with the help of segment table will convert the logical address to the physical address consists of frame number and frame offset. Is it clear? So one register will consist of the base address of the segment table. So this is the information related to the segmented paging. Now let me discuss the drawbacks in the segmented paging. Okay, one drawback of the segmented pacing is the internal fragmentation. Why the internal fragmentation will occur? Let me discuss for you. Let's take that your segment size is 4.5 KB. Let's take the segment size of S0 is 4.5 KB. And you know that page size, let's consider that is 1 KB. If page size is 1 KB, frame size is also 1 KB. Now, your page size is 1 KB and your segment size is 4.5 KB. So number of pages in a segment is equal to segment S0 is equal to segment size by page size which is equal to 4.5 by 1 seal if you apply you need 5 pages. Am I right or wrong? So in page number 0 you will have 1 KB information. In page number 1, you will have 1 KB information. In page number 2, you have 1 KB information. In page number 3, you have 1 KB information. In page number 4, you will have 0 0.5 KB information and remaining page will be free. Now let's consider that page number 4 is loaded in the frame number 4. Now it will have 0 0.5 KB information and remaining 0 0.5 KB information is free space. Now, in a particular frame, can we load more than one page at a time? No, not possible. So if we cannot load more than one page, then the 0 0.5 KB space will be wasted. This concept will call it as internal fragmentation. So segmented paging will suffer with the internal fragmentation problem. Is it clear? Now let me discuss another drawback in the segmented paging. Now look at here how many times we need to access the main memory to fetch an instruction. One is that first we need to fetch the segment table. Now the segment table will be there in where main memory. So you need to access the main memory. Then you need to access the page table of a particular segment. So page table also will be available in the main memory. So you need to access the main memory. Then once you got the conversion of logical address to physical address, then you go to main memory and access the information. So again one memory access. So minimum three main memory access you should do when it comes to the segmented paging. If it is single level paging, then we need to do only two main memory access. If it is segmented paging of one level each, we need three main memory access which is time consuming. Is it clear? Even if it is pure segmentation also, one memory access for the segment table and one main memory access. If it is pure paging also, one memory access for the page table and main memory access. So, two main memory access in this case, but here it is three memory access. Okay. So, even effective memory access will increase if you go for the segmented paging. So, this is the drawbacks in the segmented paging. I hope you have understood what is a segmented pacing and what are the drawbacks in the segmented pacing. If you still have any doubts related to the segmented pacing, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.